We are fired up to have this guest in studio. She has once again snuck past Fox Security <laughs> and made a return to the airwaves here at Fox. She was all over the TV today. She was just on Fox Business. You were probably on Outnumber. Were you on Outnumber? No, no. I'm on Gutfeld oh, tonight. Oh, oh you're on. Tudor Dixon is going to be on Gutfeld. You talk about a win for the American <laughs> people. Oh, my goodness. They're bursting into song right now. Great it's to not see with you. with you, though, so that makes me sad. Ah, Tudor, don't butter me up. <laughs> you're trying to get a softball interview out of me? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We did some hard-hitting journalism on your podcast last we week. We did. Yeah, well, you're a journalist, right? No, I, I saw ha- you on Fox Business today. I, you, you know where I've been today? I'm not even kidding. Like, besides the meth lab? <laughs> I was uh, I, knew that. I was on Fox. I was on Fox and Friends. Then I was on Fox Business. Then I was on, like, one of our local radio shows. Then I was on this show. Then I'll be on the Ingram Angle later. Oh, and wow. And then I'll be on Bath Salts at, like, 11 o'clock. It's funny. They treat you like a regular person here. You stop it. <laughs> I'm just, I don't get booked a lot. I told you, I'm just good at sneaking onto the set. Yeah, that's right. And yes. it's live TV. Once you're in the shop, what are they going to do? Pull you off? That's how I'm here. Yeah. People are like, I can't believe you're on Waters World last night. I'm like, yeah, neither can I. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, neither, neither can, can he. Neither can they. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Do you ever notice he doesn't announce me? It's just like Kool-Aid. I come in on roller skates. I'm like, oh, this guy's here again. Oh. Oh, we have Jimmy. I again. like this guy. Ah, oh, Tudor Dixon. So let's talk about it. Me and you are not fighting, uh, but people are fighting on docks. Uh, we've seen the viral video. Eric, can I ask you in there, have you seen the footage yet, or should I be telling you all about it? I have seen it. The viral video where the dude actually swims over to the dock fight. Given the month of the year, August, slowest news week, month, everything of the year. Shouldn't this just be the only thing we're watching right now? Just Because it, it solves a lot of issues. Like, politically, we all hate each other and want to beat each other up anyway. So maybe we just watch other people fight Tudor Dixon? So first I saw a reenactment of it, and I think that's <laughs> the best part. I'm like, now we're reenacting fights, which I think is joyful, but I will tell you it makes me a little bit nervous because as I was driving into New York, which is a normal day for you, but our driver got in a fight with the guy in front of us, mm-hmm. and then he started to like look like he was going to come out out of the door and and then, and then I thought you know, I'm this Midwestern girl. I don't know what's about to happen and immediately think about the dock fight. And I think, are people going to start swarming? And then do I just kind of like get down low and crawl out? I don't know. <laughs> what do you do? You don't have those skills in Holland, Michigan? No, right. Shocking. Brawl survival skills? <laughs> I know. I shouldn't admit that, though. Tudor, because... I've, I, hold on a second. We could have like a tutorial about this. Like, I've actually, and I've told the story on the air, I have, as a former taxi driver, have seen some of the wildest fights ever, including one in which I got hit with a trumpet by a mariachi band. <laughs> It's my favorite story, man. <laughs> of course. And now Why this, would you not? need to know this. People don't know this, but this could be an entry-level tip for you, okay? If you ever find yourself in the presence of a mariachi fight, which could happen to any of us. Right, I mean, yeah. Who course. among Why us? Not? I mean, everyone in the booth is shaking their head, yes. <laughs> but like, I just last <laughs> they Tuesday. They are, which is scary. <laughs> Unbelievable. If you ever find yourself in the presence of a mariachi fight, uh, they're passionate. Mariachi bands are passionate, but they're usually related. It's like, you know Oasis, those two guys who sing Wonderwall, the British guys, yeah. they beat each other up, Liam and Noel Gallagher. So the truth is they're going to beat each other up, and you like, wow, this is a bad thing, but they always make up at the end because it's just the family blowing off steam. So I didn't know this. And on the first Cinco de Mayo where I picked up a mariachi <laughs> band, I said Madison Square Garden. Is that true? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So they got a whole fight, okay, breaks out. And uh, I turned around to interview and a guy hit me with a trumpet. It was hilarious. And then when they got out. That seems like it could leave a mark, though. Yeah, not the best, but you know what I mean? It's like, this is the thing. When you're driving a camp 12 hours a day, you want to die. So it's like I leaned into it. I'm like, is that all you got? It's got to be a tuba player around here who can swing one of these. Go out a horn. Anyway, uh, they get out of the car, and as I drove away, like they dusted up and kind of laughed at each other and walked in and played their mariachi. Like This I, is when I lived in New York, though. This is how I felt all the time because I would see people yelling at each other in the grocery store, and I'm like, they hate each other. And then they'd yeah. be like, see you Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> what that's just how, happened? No, no, that's how New York works, man. Like a middle finger is hello. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like, different. You this act- is why people don't, other people don't understand Donald Trump all the time. Like he's yeah. not trying to be mean. What He's just a New Yorker. He's just being a New Yorker. And New Yorkers, this is the thing. The way we talk, because people really get hung up on Trump's words, we have no economy with words, meaning we just say stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like, like, well, like, I'll give you an example. Like, if you gave me a piece of pizza right now as a New Yorker, it would either be the greatest pizza in the history of pizza, or we should execute the owner of the shop, <laughs> 23andMe, his outstanding relatives, and round them up, too. And people are like, wow, he wants to kill the pizza guy. This and makes it's not a lot true. of sense when we just saw the World Cup, and then we yep. saw him come out and say, nice shot, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was kind of funny. And I did tweet that Sweden 
being sponsored by IKEA did have to make their beds. I the saw you. That. So I it's saw even that. more demeaning, Tudor Dixon. <laughs> Tudor Dixon's in studio against our better judgment. I kid, we love you, Tudor. Um, don't you think, though, and I do, that there is some value in him being hard on national teams or any president being hard on national teams if for only, uh, only if I'm going to do this in English, I swear. If for no other reason, then it would be good to get back to a place of collective buy-in. There should, I mean, the the exciting part about any type of a, a world event like the Olympics or the World Cup is that you're rooting for your team. But when you see that your team is not rooting for you, yeah, then you feel like someone needs to stand up for you and <laughs> and paddle your team. Imagine that you go to Yankee Stadium and the players line up on the third baseline and moon the crowd. <laughs> right, exactly. you're like, Wait, what? Yeah. What just happened here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's what's going on. The uh, mom but- and me is like, okay, we, they need a spanking before they can go. But, oh, wait, we're not allowed. No, no, you can you say whatever you want. I think a lot of the truckers just pulled over. They want you to say more, <laughs> as a matter of fact. You can hear brakes screeching all over the country. They're like, Tudor Dixon's talking about spankings on Fox Across America. <laughs> it's just, wow. Everybody okay, just pulled over. that took a turn I wasn't expecting. No, I, I, a lot of us were, to be honest with you. This has been a recurrent theme on, on these shows, Tudor. Let's talk about it. Uh, but no, you make good points, is that as a parent, I feel the same way. Because here's the thing. If you feel compelled to get out there and protest America on the world stage, it's because, number one, you can. That's right, yes. Okay? But if you can, that means you have nothing to complain about. Because most of the other countries you're complaining, you're, you're competing against would never in a million years think to protest, let alone to think that protesting might get them a deal, like a sneaker deal. Right. right. Well, no, you see Iran last year, it did not come out. They came out, they did not sing, and then it was like threats of death. You yeah. know, they're like, should they even go back to their country? And that's not a joke. I mean, you yeah. really can't do this in other countries. So I think that the Brittany Griner treatment, she realized this is a much better country than getting stuck in a jail in Russia. And I'm not saying that people should have that experience, yeah. but you can learn from other people's experiences. Yeah. And I think it's great that she came back and she said, you know, I, I appreciate America and I wish people lifted that voice up more because that's meaningful. Thank you. Tudor Dixon in studio. We're having a grown up talk about all things America. America. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you're right. You make a good point. I think what people are missing is just perspective. Because this is what I think happened. We kind of talked about this on your podcast. So if you want to hear Tudor and I do this with profanity. <laughs> you got, it's, the it's normal there. us? No. It's them. I'm kidding. Uh, but I think the truth is people have lost perspective. Because what happened is, like, we've just taken a compass now. And everyone's looking for what's wrong with things. You used to really walk in and look for what was right in every scenario. Like, I still do. I'm calibrated that way. You're a fun person, you know. Um, but most people are I don't want to say most people, but a good amount of people aren't. And I think we're giving them too much. We we were literally just talking about strikes in L.A. And you think it's you've got the writer strike, the actor strike, the hotel worker strike. Now the entire city is going on strike. Yeah. And you think about this and you think, what is happening that people are so unhappy in their careers? They feel like they're being mistreated. And are they being mistreated? Or is this just society now that yeah. looks for what can I be upset about? That's what's so weird. Like there's that Cinnabon strike where the Cinnabon workers couldn't wear a pride pin. So they're like, I don't feel safe coming to work. I'm like, well, no one should feel safe around 85,000 calories. Okay. <laughs> right. That's one of the problems in this country right now. But it's not the lack of pins. Okay. It's the fact that if you were to prick yourself with the pin, gravy would come out. Because <laughs> we're a pretty chubby country these days. It's not good, Tudor. But I think, again, that goes back to this lack of perspective where what's happening is, this is the truth. We're taking, we're misappropriating. You know, we used to call everything racist and it worked for the left. Yes. Like, ah, it's yeah, and people, we didn't. Yeah, yes. no, we never did. But people would give them their way because you just didn't want to get like p- tagged with the racists. But now they're doing that with violence. They're taking the word violence and misappropriating it. Now it's, you know, if you disagree with us, people are going to die. But it's not true. But it is it is actually we're just talking about this. It is making it is making violence normal. And mm-hmm. so. Words are not violent, yeah. but they're actually promoting violence, and it is hurting different parts of society that are now being seen as, oh, gosh, if I go into this neighborhood, it's going to be violent. Mm-hmm. And you don't, I mean, you were just telling me that the police were coming to your house. You're one of those neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> not your, No, they're coming to my house because of, like, deaf leopards. Not <laughs> it's not, you know, it's going to be okay, Tudor Dixon. But the point is, yes, anyone who tells you speech is violence is basically telling you they've had a privileged enough life yes. to not be involved in any violence. Yes. No, I've never been, like, punched in the head with a screwdriver in my taxi and been like, thank God he didn't call me a name, bro. Well, we 
we just were to also talking about the fact that you people, had a pretty happening conversation on the way here. This is our third. We were just talking. Continue. We we well. well you're I'm driving in from Newark. Very I get it. Go ahead. You're passionate. You're excited. Go ahead. But same with the idea of education, because that has been attacked as racist. If you want yeah. people to be able to choose for education, that's been attacked as racist. And it's always the person that had the privileged life oh, that totally. had the private education. That's like, uh, well, it was okay for me. But if you try to take other kids out of their bad situation and put them in my situation, that's racist. Like, what? How is that work? <laughs> how did that work? <laughs> yeah. But how did you get there? But that's just those but, words are violent. To full circle this, yeah. okay? Because we were just talking about Megan Rapino and the and the women's soccer team. Okay, she wants biological men competing in women's soccer. Greg Abbott just thankfully signed a law with the help of Riley Gaines that might actually level the playing field in women's sports. But isn't it such a scam that you could go out and make millions of dollars as a woman's athlete and then retire and welcome and hold the door open for men to start competing, which right. kind of screws everybody else over. Right. And then they were violently, uh, they were really attacked by protesters when they went yeah. to sign that bill in Texas. And I think, how are there this many people that are so angry about the fact that women want to have their own sports, which they've had for how many years now? Isn't that weird? It's weird. And that, but it's again, it goes back to this other thing. They think they're pushing back against violence. They think they're pushing back right. against attack. We have to go after Riley Gaines because she's the term they use is transgenocide. I'm like, dude, does anyone have you guys uncovered any mass graves? Like, no, you haven't, because that's absurd. But it's also a lack of thinking. Mm -hmm. We because people thought that the more access to information you had with cell phones and social media, that you would be smarter, but you are dumber. No. It is like I only have to read the headline and now I know everything. Yep. And this person's transphobic. They might not even know what that means. No, they don't even know what it means. You gotta go but be beyond the headline. And I can tell you that because most of the things in my search history are described as one type of video. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get here and you're like, hey, wait a minute, they're not gonna lift weights at all. This but isn't a workout video. Yeah, well, it is, but I mean, certainly a lot of cardio involved here. But man, oh boy, Tudor Dixon, we are, where does the time go? Uh, so you're on Gutfeld tonight. Everybody needs to watch you with our lovable comedy dwarf, Greg Gutfeld. I am, the audience knows this, filling in for him August 28th. Oh. It might be a Tuesday. we got to work this out. Maybe you'll come back and hang out with your, your radio buddy. We that, can do some TV. That sounds fun. And I'm hosting the, uh, I'm hosting the Saturday Night Show August 26th, but... Uh, they might have me do it at the debate because Fox is hosting the debate that week. Oh, Should, I will be at the debate. Is that true? Yes. You cancel that flight, Eric. We're not. <laughs> we're not. It's not even because of her. You cannot get away from no, me. No, you're fine. It's Sarah. Sarah's the problem <laughs> off the right, air. I know. It's like she, she know. comes off as nice People in the meetings and the emails. People are always complaining about Sarah. Yeah, no, no. It's, a, it's she's person, like a population control device. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. Um, but should uh, do you want all the candidates on the stage, ideally? Okay, so I will tell you quite honestly, I don't because I don't think that some of them actually deserve to be on the oh, stage. Oh, no, fair. But do you want Trump to show up? No. You don't want him. You don't think he should give everybody a shot because he has such a big lead? But as a former candidate, I know they will say things that are unfair and uh -huh. he will be trapped in unfair situations. And I think we know who he is. Yeah. No one questions who he is or yep. what he wants to do. Uh -huh. So this one, no. I think the other candidates should get out there and have their chance. All 738 of them? <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> That's it's, why some, no. But there are people that you've never heard of that mm -hmm. are good people. You no, know? I don't doubt it. No, there's a lot of good ideas. I actually, I appreciated the governor of North Dakota, Doug Burgum, actually clapped back on George Stephanopoulos. I, this is he was funny. Him, I was just asked by oh, Sean a, Duffy, who do you want to see at the debate? And I said, Governor Burgum, because I don't think people know who he is. Yes, and he clapped back. He had good ideas. No, the Republicans have a good bench. You know, yeah. they have some people on that stage that absolutely should be there. And then, like, Christie's there because they just want him to go up the steps, you know, because they have steps <laughs> on either side. And that's, again, that's consider it just the same. It's That's that's a reason to have somebody. Get him know. out of Cinnabon. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Tudor Dixon, bring it at full circle. How dare you? <laughs> Good luck on Gutfeld tonight. We're all excited to watch. There she goes. The great Tudor Dixon. Uh, get her out. Get her out of here. Back after this.